What's up guys? Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to check out an add-on from Chip Walters that can make sci-fi style modeling very easy in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So we've talked about some of Chip's add-ons before. Um, he's got a ton of add-ons for doing different things, right? For generative design. So we've talked about Simple Sci-Fi Pro before. We've also looked at Kit Ops, which uh, basically makes it so that you can do kit bashing and um, basically take different parts and pieces and put them together into um, really detailed looking models. So Spock is a new tool specifically designed to pack objects onto surfaces. And so the way that it works is basically what you do is you can select different surfaces and then you can use this to almost like scatter objects onto those surfaces but it's a little more than that because it's using an algorithm in order to figure out how those things are going to sit on that surface so that you don't get overlap, right? So if you have a bunch of screens on a wall, for example, you don't want those screens like running into each other. This is a really smart tool that is able to do that. Now note that there is very detailed documentation you can find in the documentation page right here, as well as a discord if you want to go ask questions. But the documentation is right here and it's going to get into a lot more detail as to how exactly you can use this tool. So he's got a ton of video documentation in here where um, he talks you through exactly how all of this works. So he's also got a catalog, which I'll link to, um, that basically runs you through um, some of the available D-packs for this. And so a D-pack is basically a collection of objects that this is going to use to scatter. So depending on what you're trying to do, there's a bunch of different D-packs out there that let you do different things, right? So this one, for example, uses D-packs to create a city, while this one creates more like circuits and transistors and little uh, electrical tools, that kind of thing. So um, you can go through this page and see um, what some of those packs are available. I'm expecting more packs to come out now that Spock is available. But let's jump over into Blender real quick and let's talk about how this works. So to install this, this tool basically comes with two files. It comes with a zip file that has the add-on in it as well as a sample DPAX file, which is going to contain the assets that you're going to use. But you want to go into edit preferences and you want to install that zip file, um, the one that doesn't say DPAX on it. And what you can do is you can just install that, make sure you enable it. Now, one other thing you're going to want to make sure that you do so that you can actually like access your assets is you want to make sure that you set your custom DPAX folder path. So for me, I just have a folder that has a bunch of his KPAX from other tools in it, but um, you want to make sure those DPAX are in there. So make Make sure you set this folder and linked it to the folder that has the D-packs that come with Spock in it so that you're going to be able to access these. But the way that this works is really interesting. Um, so it's not built on geometry nodes. So Chip said just from like a uh, just from like a logistical standpoint, that just didn't really make sense. So this is actually built on a Python script. But um, what you want to do is you want to tap the in letter key on your keyboard and you want to come, come down here and find the SP tab right here. And so the SP tab is going to give you access to everything within Spock. And so the first thing you want to note in this is it basically uses an algorithm in order to pack things on a face. And so if you look at this, this is the different kinds of ways that this can um, pack things onto a surface. So it could just do a random. You can also do the max, the minimum, other things like that. So you're going to pick one of these and that's going to set the way that this is uh, placing these or packing them on the face. We'll go ahead and leave it at random random right now. But um, the other thing you probably want to do is you want to go find the assets that you want to bring in. So for example, I've run in this Spock sci-fi and I've clicked on the option to load to scene. And when you do that, what that's going to do is that's going to bring all of these into your scene. Notice how they're just kind of sitting off to the side, but that means that it can then reference that geometry inside of your scene. You can go ahead and leave them all turned off. That's fine, but you need to have them in here so that you can reference these different collections. And so what you want to do is let's say that we wanted to add some detail to this surface. Well, you want to start by adding a collection set. So you can click on the button for new right here in order to add a collection set. Now, if you look at this little drop down right here, you can actually go find the different collections that are contained inside of this, right? And so let's say, for example, that we wanted to add, um, we'll go with just some pipes right here. So I'm going to click on pipes. What you can do is you can click on the button for pack 
And what that's going to do is that's going to place those on the surface. So it's basically going to use the algorithm in order to generate where those are placed. Now, notice how if you look at this, this is basically taking all of these objects and randomly placing them on the surface. Now say that you don't like the way that it does this. So let's say for example, we wanted to have some more random rotation in here. What you can do is you can click on the option for rotate and then you can set any random rotation in 90 degree increments. So if you click on this now, click on the button for pack, that's going to rerun this and repack these on this surface with some more randomization. And so if you look at this, you can tell that this has come in here and it's repacked these. Now, one of the cool things about this is notice how it's using that algorithm in order to set those objects so that they are all on the surface, right? Like nothing goes beyond the surface or anything like that. It's literally finding the best solution here to get all of those on this surface. And so once you kind of figure that out, you can start building on top of this. So let's say we had a surface like this one. And so what I wanna do is I wanna start by adding pipes to this entire surface. And so we're gonna go ahead and leave this on random for right now. And so what I wanna do is I wanna click on the button for pack. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna do exactly what we saw before, right? It's gonna add all of those objects to this surface in here, and it's gonna kind of randomize them um, along this surface. Now, one of the things to note about this, cause that actually looks pretty good. I like the way that that did that. Um, but one of the things that's cool about this is you're not limited to one collection. So notice how right now this is using this pipes collection set. Well, if I click on the new button right here, I can also come in here and select something else. So in this case, the SP dots is going to add lights. So if I was to run this again, click on pack again, this is going to add lights to the surface. So when I click on this, this is going to place this in here. Note that you can set density a little bit by adjusting the density value right here. Okay, and so notice how this did something we don't like. What it did is it replaced all of these objects um, with lights in here. We don't want that. We want those lights to kind of be placed on top of the objects. So instead of selecting the option for instances, we want to select the option for fill. And so when I select the option for fill, what that's going to do is that's going to basically fill this space with these little light dots in here, no matter whether or not we actually have other geometry in there. So now what that's going to do is that's going to place those lights across this whole surface, right? So if you look at this, these lights are now being added behind this. Still not necessarily what I want though, because I want this to be off of this surface a little bit, right? It's kind of like behind these objects right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take those lights and we're just going to add a Z value. And so a Z value is going to offset these from the surface. So if I was to type in like a 0 0.05, something like that, and then click on pack again, this is gonna rerun and it's gonna place those random dots off of the surface a little bit. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us the illusion of the lights being on top of these objects right here, assuming I've picked my distance right. And so we're gonna go ahead and rerun this. You wanna make sure that you've selected your surface in here, um, the overall surface that you're spreading this along. But I'm gonna go ahead and rerun this. So I'm gonna click on the pack button right here in order to rerun. There we go. And notice what it's done, it's, it's offset those out a little bit so that they actually look like some of them are on top of these surfaces, other things like that. So um, it's just kind of an illusion because it's not, I mean, if you look at these really close, they don't really correspond with these surfaces right here. Now you could also move them back, but notice how it does a really good job when you kind of zoom out. It looks like all of those lights should be on here. Now, one thing that you can do is you can take this collection and you can save it. And so when I save it, what that's gonna do is that's going to save that set in my saved sets right here. Well then, notice how I can toggle this on and off like this. So now I've got that save set in here that I can toggle off. Well, now I can clear all and I can add some additional things. And anytime I wanna put those back on here, I can definitely do that. But let's say that I wanted to add some screens to this surface or some switches. Um, there's a couple different options in here. Well, what we would do is we would tab into edit mode and we would just select this one surface. Now I'm gonna click on new and let's go ahead and let's add the option for displays. So if I click on displays, click on pack, that's going to spread those displays across this surface. Notice how there is an option in here to rotate those. We might need to rotate them 90 degrees. Um, these usually come in, yeah, vertically for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate these 90 degrees like this. 
click on pack again, and that's gonna rotate the direction that these screens are facing, like this. So now we have screens on this surface, which isn't really that impressive until you go back and you toggle this other surface on here as well. And then you start getting this like stacked effect in here, right? So um, it gets a lot cooler once you start adding things like that. But let's say we don't just want screens on this surface. We also want some switches. So we're gonna go in and we're gonna select the switches option right here. And we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna click on pack again. And so what that's gonna do is it's gonna take the displays and the switches, combine them together, and then pack them onto this surface. And so notice how we've got more switches on here. And again, these switches, if you look at them, you probably want those rotated 90 degrees as well. All right, so now our switches are in here. They're rotated the right direction, but notice how it's just kind of randomly placing those on the surface. And so you can do that with every surface and uh, kind of do this however you want to. So say that, for example, I wanted this whole surface, but I just wanted to add like some plating down here. So we could, well, first off, we're going to save, but then we're gonna clear all, or we're gonna add some flooring. So we're gonna click in here to the floor. We're gonna click on the option to pack, and that's gonna add flooring on top of this right here. And so notice how those plates are coming in here a little bit big. So we're gonna bring our scale down to like 0.5. We're gonna go ahead and click on the pack button again. And so I'm gonna go ahead and switch this to fill and also set my Z value to like 0.1 in order to get these off of the surface a little bit so I don't have these objects really showing through the way that I was before. And so as you get kind of more familiar with these different settings, you get a little bit better with this. Like for example, I'm not I'm not 100% used to the way that this is doing this. So every time I make a change, um, I usually I'm just having to do a little bit of trial and error in here. Um, but notice how if I set that density back to one, then I get this more on a grid like this. So you can use this in order to add flooring. You can use it to add um, all of these different panels. You can use it to add switches and displays really easily inside your models. All right, so I'll link to Spock on this page. It's a really clever implementation of doing the whole um, of generative design for modeling inside of Blender. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.